Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning on location is award-winning psychologist from the therapy room, Dr. Geraldine Tan. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, and I am live from Cambridge Secondary School. Oh, it sounds so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it like does journalist, sound nice. Right? Yeah, and they are having their uh, career day today and they have a few professionals coming down including those from the urban farm and the uh, security. So I thought that was very interesting. So thank you Kenrich for having us also. Wonderful. Nice. I think we do need more farmers and security guards as well. Urban farmers. Urban farmers. Mm. They're still farmers? Yeah. <laughs> this is true. yeah. Anyway, um, today we're talking about Bullying and cyberbullying. We are, we are. Uh, and it is a special request from a young teen who has now, who is feeling much, much better. And she said, Auntie Jerry, can you talk about cyberbullying? Because she, she was a victim of cyberbullying. So I said, okay. I will, and she would always listen to therapy. She would say, you know, when she comes back from school uh, after, oh. you know, on, on Facebook or on YouTube. One of oh, those. nice. Yeah. Good yeah. morning then. Yeah. Hope you had a good day at school <laughs> when she watches this later. Yes. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to start with bullying because it has a lot of overlap. Although there are six, six different types of bullying, it, uh, it's not as clear. So the very first one that we know is physical bullying. So physical bullying, we have them hitting you, you know, um, kicking you, tripping you, especially if you're in school, you know. Mm. Uh, it can also be, and this is something very important for the students to, to note, hand gestures. So mm. if you put up a middle finger at someone, or if you do, um, I can't even repeat it. You put a circle, then yeah. you put a finger through oh. it. Yeah. That, yes, it has been circulating and it has been, yeah, I'm horrified. It has been circulating in the primary schools. Oh, no. So oh, no. I want to highlight that so that if somebody does it to you, you can call it out. I'm surprised those hand signals is, still exist. Wait, but <laughs> Jerry, do yeah. these primary school yes. kids actually know what that means or are they just following what bigger kids are doing? No, so I don't know where they are, you know, um, seeing it, finding out or whether it is a TikTok thing, but I thought mm. it was a very local thing, but, you know, they are still doing it. Um, wow. And I was mortified when a young girl, nine years old, said, CB, you know, oh. and the full one, yeah. And she said it so naturally. I said, do you even know what it means? She said, it's white chicken, isn't it? I was like, no, sweetheart. So I had to proceed to explain to her what it is. Did you say white, white chicken? chicken? Oh. Yeah, white chicken. IT, okay. IT. Oh, so she wow. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she could be faking me all. I mean, I don't know. But um, sometimes they say it and they have a little bit of knowledge, but they don't know the full extent of what they are saying. Wow. I'm not surprised because they get a lot of their information online. Yeah. There, there are so many forums, there are so many platforms mm. where they mm. can read mm. and see these sort of actions and words. And they mm. don't know what it means, yeah. but they know it's trending. So they're just going to use it. Yeah. 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 So we already went into the verbal part, but one more thing that I would like to remind the young ones and all of us. Um, so it's not just hand gestures. If you steal or if you break somebody else's item, it's mm. also considered physical bullying. Okay. Mm. All right, let's mm. continue to talk to Jerry on The Big Show TV. Up next, Crash Adams. This is 8 Days on KISS 92. You know, I'm just thinking, like, so, yeah. you, you're talking about bad language and all that just now, right? I mean, it, yes. over the years, I mean, it's happened as yeah. well. Right? I mean, yeah, we, I mean, you we see, we you seem it. very, like, shocked by it. Um, 
Is it really that but shocking? primary schools, though? I mean, I don't know. I was shocked that was. Yeah, I don't think I had. No, we would usually hear it from someone. As a kid, you know, of I course. used like the F word. Yeah. I think when I was in primary school or whatever, of course, got a slap from my mom straight away. Pop. Yeah. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what happened then? You, so, you know, know, that's a very bad word. And after that, okay, yes. like, I didn't use it anymore yeah. until I turned, uh, mm. you know, 21. But you, yeah, right. But you would have heard it from an older <laughs> child, most likely, you know? Uh, mm. Perhaps, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's not, I mean, to me, it's no surprise because as a kid, right, you pick up these things. Yeah. It's a matter of, um, you know, whether you understand it, whether your parent or, mm. or you know, a relative explains it to you that, look, it's not mm. a good word to use. So don't mm. use that word. It's a mm. bad word. Yeah. They all say it's a bad word. You know? I think once a child is explained what it actually means, yeah. they'll know when mm. it can be used because sometimes i mean mm. it calls for something vulgar you know something happens to you not as a child but yeah. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. uh or why it shouldn't be used but it always puzzles me how come we need to use such language mm. it's that we don't have enough vocabulary to express our anger, our frustration, mm. our disappointment, our sadness, you know, our embarrassment, our guilt. Because if you see and how the uh, uh, the, the British or my UK clients explain it to me is that they use it for every sort of expression and emotion. Are you talking and about the kids or what? The kids, yeah. No, no. Oh, the, 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 the clients from UK. Oh. The clients from UK, okay. so they use the F word very For liberally. Yeah. yeah, so they it's so how they explain it to me is that it is for every emotion and yeah. every expression, and they will just pepper it. So that's their culture. But when we are talking about Asian culture, we're talking about Singapore, and these children use it deliberately on to another person and mm. not the way the the british use it yeah. in a, any sort of context it's like our la and our ma and they just pepper their, their sentences right but our children use it on to another person does it mean that they do not have the vocabulary and we need to teach them the correct vocabulary that's my thought <laughs> yeah no i get what you mean it could possibly be um but it's also i feel like it's it's such a vulgar word in our society yeah. that they're using it with such hatred you know yeah mm. yeah yep. it's yeah. it's like yeah. it's like when i lose my cool right michelle will turn to me and go can't you speak english mm. is that all you know <laughs> But it says adults, we can do anything yes, we want. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I'm talking about kids here. We know. You know, when we were kids, there were many things we couldn't say or yeah, do. Yeah. And that's the life of yeah. a kid. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I use the F word quite a bit, mm. you know, in my uh, adulthood, right? Yeah. It's like for certain things. Yeah. I'm not justifying mm. it, but mm. look, I'm an adult. Mm. I can say whatever I want. Yeah. As long as I'm not using it all the time on. and it comes out once in mm. a while or I'm using it on someone else. As long as mm. you're not using yeah. it on someone else. Yeah. It's just an expression because I'm frustrated with something yes, or whatever. Yeah. It's okay. But mm. kids, kids mm. should be taught that no, yeah. it is wrong. Mm. You're not even allowed to use it. At but mommy, point. mommy, daddy, you, you guys use, uh, it. use it yeah. at home all the time. Yeah, that's because we're adults. You yeah. cannot, you know. But these days, parents don't talk to their kids like that. When we were mm. kids, we knew our place. Yeah. Right. I'm a kid, uh, uh, and 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 here are the adults. The adults can do whatever they want. There well, was a, there was a mm, hierarchy. Yeah, one day, yeah. One day, when you're an adult, you can do whatever you want as well. But now it would be so justified like that. Now it's so different. You know, you have conversations with your kid, and 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 everything's kind of equal, right? I do you see that, Doctor Jerry? I mean, I'm all for hierarchy. Yeah. But I'm saying mm. that these days, it's very much like you are my friend and we are equal and let's have a conversation. Okay. And what I do, you do. <coughs> so, okay. how I would hold on, hold on, hold, it is... Okay, hold, hold on, on Jerry. We're going back on. on. Good morning, Dr. Jerry. And today we're talking about bullying and vulgarities, uh, <laughs> which I would say is it, it is a form of bullying when you use it on someone else, mm. right? So, earlier on the Big Show mm. TV, we were talking about how liberally um, children these days are using vulgarities. Some yes. may know the, the meanings behind them, some may not. But we were also comparing yep. it to when we were growing up, how 
kids mm. would know their place and know when they were <laughs> they had to speak or could speak. But these days, parents have a more equal relationship with their children in terms of an open communication. Mm. And we are friends. And uh, what mm. what I do, you can do as well. So, what's your take mm. on that? Mm. So I would say, and I would frame it in the way that whether you're an adult or a child, to know when to use it. So we agree we don't use it on another person, but when do you use it? So whether, and I'm very appreciative whether it is the adult client or a student that comes into my space and they say, oh, you know, can I swear? And it's very interesting because the student would say, sorry, Auntie Jerry, it just came out and they apologize for it. But it is it is an expression of frustration, of anger, and perhaps they, they needed to get that ah out. And it sounded, you know, and they needed to use a word and they ask for permission. So the, when they ask for permission, permission is granted. They go ahead and say it, but it's not on me. And I understand that. Right. Yeah. But that's so funny asking for permission to use no, a swear word. Like well, they they're in an environment where they need to ask for permission. They, I think they feel that. But do you think that these yeah. these same kids would ask for permission outside of your space and say, you know, to their friends or anything? Is that how they were brought up? The very fact that they can ask in my uh, in my presence, they know how to restrain themselves mm. in the school environment, in the work environment, in certain environments that uh, they need to behave themselves or, or carry themselves uh, a little bit more professionally, perhaps. But with their friends, you know what they they can go all out. Mm. You know that's that's in their own private space, they can go all out. We're not going to uh, restrict them. Mm. Do the yeah. adults, adult clients ask permission before they swear? Or do they yes, apologize they do. for it? They do as well. Okay. Oh, that's quite something. So I'm, I'm oh. really privileged in that way. But verbal bullying doesn't just mean, you know, saying the swear words. It includes name calling. It includes threats. Uh, even teasing that you would not stop them. Means there's a lot of repetition and the other person says, stop it, stop it. And you would not stop. Now that is bullying also. Yeah, okay. I hate it when people tease, you know. I just think it's just so, so unnecessary. I, I went through a lot of that when I, I was in school. I absolutely detest Okay, it. let's continue to talk to Jerry on the Big Show TV. It's 8.18. So there are three more. So there's sexual. So sexual mm. bullying is sexual comments like and sexual jokes, name calling, crude gestures, um, spreading sexual rumors. Uh, I think if we remember, so I'm going to some of these bullying can uh, cross over to one another. So if you're looking at deep fakes and you put somebody's face onto a nude body, that mm. is all bullying so it is both sexual as well as cyber bullying mm. uh, sexual can also include touching somebody without their permission just grabbing someone so you yeah. talk uh, we talk about like molesting we talk about you know inappropriate sort of touching mm. um, yeah prejudicial would be bullying based on the t uh, the victims race ethnicity religion or sexual orientation so that's mm. being prejudiced mm. yeah mm -hmm. oh there's that bell again that bell. you hear the bell so we are in school it goes <laughs> off every 20 minutes for so for students and parents that know about the pomodoro uh, method of studying you study 20 minutes you rest five minutes you study 20 minutes you rest five minutes i want to so work 20 minutes and rest five minutes How i about wish that? we had that when i was in school there was no 20 minute five minutes <laughs> what 20 minutes really? five minutes yeah i feel like you can barely I had get it. things started had it. not 20 yeah. minutes 20 minutes. Uh, that's how I program my mind. Anyway. Okay. Oh, you I'll focus, concentrate off. for 20 he, minutes he, and then switch off. He was sleeping yeah. for five minutes yeah, out of yeah. every 20. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jerry, you mentioned there were six forms of bullying. So I got physical, verbal, sexual, prejudicial. I think I missed yes. one. Okay, uh, I think I missed one. There's relational. So oh, relational. relational 
Yeah, embarrassing the victim in public, spreading rumors, ostracizing them purposefully, not including them in social situations. Oh. So you're talking about a relationship. Mm, yeah, yeah so it sounds so painful. Some, uh. But but that's when the popular group kind of ostracize someone, right, and say, mm. "Oh, you you cannot." Eat with us anymore, and there are students that come in and say, "My friend group just ousted me, and I'm alone during recess." Mean girls, yeah. I, exactly <laughs> that. That's, that's the first thing that came to mind. Mean girls. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the relational bullying, which occurs a lot in school also, and people don't realize that that is bullying. They think it is just part of growing up, but mm. when it hurts and it causes a lot of pain, uh, when you need to be in that environment for like eight hours a day, you know, you're there for such long hours and you feel so much angst. Yeah, that's yeah. not a pleasant place to be. You can't sit with the yeah. cool kids. Yeah, but why do you want to sit with the cool kids anyway? Yeah, but I mean that's always how it's, it is, right? You the want popular to be kids. Yeah, is you this want to be a is this a, a a female thing? Because no. I don't think no, it's a guy thing. No, well. yeah, boys is, do it as well. Nowadays, you're gonna be boys as well. No, mm-hmm. even back then, you always have that cool gang nah, that I hung never, out and I all was, that. I was never part of that. Of course, no, you I, were I, not I, the cool kid. That's why. No, exactly, and I didn't want to be a cool kid. Yeah, but I had I had a couple like really good friends, and they carried you through school. Yeah, yeah, but some. People feel it because they're, they're completely ostracized, even from a cool group like yours. Right. Yours may not be the cool group, but you had your you had support group. group, you know. Yeah. And there yes. might be somebody that wanted to be a part of it, but you you may not have known. The cool kids were always a mm. little bit over the top, like, Yeah, anyway, of course. Yeah. You know, so no. No, but not, it's not about the cool kids. It's about clicky. Mm. You know, about mm. about groups that just stick together. Okay. That leave others out, mm. maybe unknowingly as well. What if it's done yeah. unknowingly, well, though, Dr. Jerry? It can't be considered bullying, I, right? No. So if it's unknowing, um, I think where where people feel the most pain is when it's done viciously. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. So it really stings. You deliberately make unknowing. the person feel like they are being left out. Yeah. It's like mm. no, yes. you're not good enough to. To sit yes. near us, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, mm. Which and, is and usually you have, yeah, and you have people rallying the other person. Hey, don't talk to so and so. You know, oh. and we just hang out together. Yeah, and it's it when when news gets to the victim's ears, it gets very very painful. Mm. 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 Oh my goodness! I mean, that was like mm. as we mentioned, mean girls like in school. Can you imagine adults doing that as well? And they are. Oh, they absolutely! Are. Of course, they are. Even in the workplace, mm. you yeah. know, yeah. among yeah. among uh, yeah. social circles, they are. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, with all the bullying, there's also the cyber bullying, which is on the rise. So, all all the different types of bullying has kind of stabilized over the years, but cyberbullying has also increased quite a bit. Uh, so that's why the schools are also putting a lot of emphasis on cyberbullying because uh, our devices are so accessible. So we have our phones with us. Phones, there are a million apps that mm. you can actually bully someone, you know, through text, through images, through videos, through posts. So, you know, all the different apps that are available, um, sometimes they are just targeting it. So what is really popular in the secondary schools are um, having uh, spam accounts. So they have spam community accounts uh, and they add everybody in the cohort or in the school and they can start um, posting things about a specific person anonymously or teachers. So, mm. yeah teachers can be f- also uh, the target of this bullying so they are not exempted or even uh, vice principals and principals or anyone in the school mm. yeah and you just need that one person to start it and because you know they they, they why do people do it right because there's that you, you're anonymous that's one you garner a lot of likes for it. So mm. if you are trying to hunt and sniff out likes and you put up a very um, jarring post 
that excites the people. It doesn't have to be true. And everybody starts liking it. And you are fueled by that uh, uh, confidence that mm. everybody is behind you. You would do it again. Okay. Going back on air, stand by. Can I say that having green tea in the morning is the most horrible thing? Ever? <laughs> oh, no, is it really? <laughs> you know, I was just trying to be a bit healthier this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually I have like two two cups of coffee during the show. Yeah. Today I said, no, yeah. I'm going to have one and one cup of green tea. Oh my God. You it's regret it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not a fan of green tea. I love oh my green God. tea. No, a Japanese restaurant is fine, but yeah. in, the morning, in the morning. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit hard. So, <laughs> Dr. Jerry, we're talking about uh, yes. bullying today and we've already covered quite a bit, but we're now yes. on the the sixth type of bullying, which is cyberbullying. 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 Uh, and you know, Jerry, we're talking about the victims, the people being bullied. Maul yes. has come onto our Facebook page and she's taken it to the other side. The yes. person doing the bullying. She says, yes. I feel oftentimes bullying is deep rooted and not one sided mm. Mm. as the bullies themselves aren't in a good environment and may be bullied by someone else in their own life. Mm. But it's difficult Agreed. to keep an open mind and see this. It's like what they say, right? Agreed. Hurt people hurt. Yes. And bullies yes. bully, Bully. right? Yes. Is this true? Yes. Absolutely. So when I was doing this um, topic, I did tell the young one because she will listen to it. And I say, Auntie Jerry will also look at the bully side. So why people bullies? One of the reasons that Mo has given is that they may have been bullied themselves and they don't know what to do with that emotion. They don't know what to do with that helplessness. So they then take to bullying to figure out what to do. Or perhaps they, all, they, they have um, moved into like mental health issues because bullying can cause trauma. Bullying can cause depression, anxiety. There's a lot of fear. You know, am I going to um, switch on my phone and there's a million sort of uh, posts on me. So there's a lot of anxiety also. So mental health issue is another reason why people then express it and they assume that it is expressing on their own social media. But it hurts someone else and is mm. traumatic for someone else. So then it becomes bullying. Yeah. Uh, it could be that they are taking revenge using this method. So it could be like, pe since people did it to me, it validates that I can do it to someone else. Mm. Or I'm taking revenge because you stole my boyfriend or girlfriend. Mm. I'm going to let the whole world know. I'm going to wave it in public to shame you, to let people know what you have done. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. So it is not very different. So the line is very, very thin, right? If we think about what I've just said, um, sometimes when we have bad service or when we have uh, something happens in a public area or a service person, you hear some people say, you know, I'm going to write on go your Google review so that everybody yeah. can see it. Yeah. So. My question for us all today is, where is that line between bullying and expressing your opinion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because Jer sometimes, unwittingly, we become bullies also. Mm. Sorry, Without FD. knowing it. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go, we, we'll, when it's I, true. When we come back, we've got, I've got a question for you. I just, I, I just want to say, like, whenever I feel down or I feel like bullied or whatever, I watch The Godfather. Oh, great one. <laughs> It's my favorite movie of it all is. time. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. Kind of lifts you up, you know. Mm. And yeah. it's like, mm, I want to be the godfather. <laughs> Corleone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, up next, uh, this is Jenny from Blackpink with Mantra on Kiss 92. So, Jerry, my question for you is, with physical bullying, it's a little different because you can see the signs sometimes. Yes. With yes. cyber bullying, the signs mm. aren't always mm. seen. Mm. Um, no. And correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of kids suffer in silence for a long time. 
Yeah. Why don't they open up? So if I can just mm. give some numbers before you uh, get into that, Dr. Jerry, there was in a Straits Times article in July yes. that uh, mm-hmm. said the number has risen to about 74% of people who use the internet have been cyberbullied in Singapore. This is mm. Singapore. And only about a quarter of them report it. This is according to the Ministry of Digital Development and Information. Mm. And the platforms that they found, Instagram, TikTok, X, YouTube, Facebook, and Hardware Zone. Because mm. Hardware Zone also has a forum. Yeah. So yes. you even find it on places yeah. like Reddit and, and, and Hardware Zone and, and other forums. Mm. Mm. So going so back to the question, Jerry, why do these kids stay quiet? quiet. Why, why don't they open up the minute it starts? Sometimes they feel like they can manage it. You know, if I ignore it, it would go away. Mm. And that, you know, and that's something we have shared with them, right? Like don't engage or disengage. If you don't fan the fire, yeah. it died down. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, on on the in, in the internet world, it doesn't work like that. If you're talking about physical bullying, okay, in your face, in person, if you don't give the person an audience, the person is talking to the wall. Yeah. Mm. But when you're on the internet, the person cannot see who the victim is. There's no feedback at all. Mm. Instead, the feedback comes from the people that gives uh, their opinion, that replies them, that gives them the likes. So whether they someone tells them online, hey, stop it, and they text in the comments, or they, they are told, you know, online, oh, yeah, well done. Oh, I didn't think of it this way. They feel very empowered and very emboldened because mm. they are still having the feedback. No one is disengaging with them. The victim don't need to engage in this instance, but everybody else engages. Sorry. Uh, yes. Angel. No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just letting you carry on. And then whenever you stop, then I come in. But I was just wondering, is this somewhat a pursuit of power for the bully as well? Because they want to be mm. empowered by this fuel that, mm. you know, they're, they're fanning, they're fanning the flames from the comments yes. that are given, right? Mm. Mm. So some of them want to feel that do, uh, I can dominate the world. Well, the, the world is in my hands sort of feeling. And this provides the platform too. Uh, and they do feel that power because I can rally so many people. It can go viral. So they want it to go viral. Um, mm. Sometimes it is them... Uh, feeling that they are small and they are nothing and with putting up a post and garnering so much they feel like they are an influencer you know this influencer wave that is going through everyone they feel like okay i'm starting to be that influencer that i want to be and the physical bullying is very shocking so we talk about physical bullying but there are some people that video the physical bullying and post it online so it's now no longer become just physical bullying it is cyber bullying so interesting because you have the victim being bullied twice over which mm. is very very distressing for mm. the uh the the bullet the victim yeah jerry the other thing is and i'm sure this is happening right now we have parents listening to us they have yeah. that silent child they mm. are worried that there is a bullying instance how do parents mm. start that conversation okay okay so this was something i I chatted with a young one and say what what can help you and she says i just want my parents to say i love you and i was like oh wow she says it's so powerful because um when you feel helpless you don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know where where is it that is safe And Mm. for parents to just say that I embrace you, the words I love you, just helps to relieve some of the intense emotion. Mm. She says, listen 
to me to listen to the whole issue because parents tend to interject very often before listening to the entire situation. And the last thing she says, please don't give us solution. Please don't think that we have not tried everything before we come to you. We try everything in our power already. So um, I love you. Listen and don't give solution. So this and this is, something is from one girl. Wow. This is just yes. from one girl. Wow. Yes. wow. I, I, yeah. So she has had therapy for some time and the last time she came so last week she came she was in a really good space very upbeat and she that's why you know we were talking about it and say okay can you talk about this you know issue am i allowed to ask that whether she came to you because she had bullying issues no cannot yes okay yes, yes. See, that's why she, i said she, am i allowed glenn <laughs> that's for her to answer <laughs> Yes, I've got permission from both mummy okay. and daughter okay. that I can share it online. I hope they're both listening. Amazing. Um, yes. So she came because she was bullied. Okay, Hang hold on. on. We're talking about, you know, at first I thought it was a pretty straightforward topic, bullying, cyberbullying and, and all that. But... Um, <laughs> No, it's not. It's very, it's very complex. I obviously have my views on it, but I just feel like I should not air my views. It's oh, but should why? Not. No, should you not. can air your views. No, because, there because, is no should. You no. can if you want. No, it's fine. Uh, what were you guys talking about just now? Uh, While we were I was talking about how Dr. Jerry has a, a, a client that actually allowed her to share her story about her bullying and where she is now which yes. is a much better place because of your help yes. obviously and talking about it yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody rallying together talking about it you know um really helped this young lady i think when she came it was uh she was feeling very horrible about the entire situation uh I, it was not that okay bullying had stopped but the repercussions of it, the lingering effects Ooh. of it. This like was PTSD. This was yeah. cyber bullying yeah. or was this physical bullying? Yeah, so cyber bullying. Cyber. Okay. cyber and bullying. how old was yeah. she? Do you mind me asking when she started getting bullied? She's a teenager. She's a teenager. So okay. I was teen. Yeah, so mm -hmm. in secondary school. So I. she said, so this brave young girl said that I can share, you know, that the... the her name and everything, but I decided against it because I'm yeah. like, mm, okay, no need. Yeah. No, I agree. But thank you for offering. Uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry Psych Boy has come onto our Facebook page, and he echoes what Doctor Jerry said, and I think he 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 put this up there for the people who comment on cyberbullying. He said perhaps yes. the biggest bullies are the mm. bystanders because you give mm. the bully an audience. You are empowering the bully. The bystander may be the bigger bully. Not sure about mm. bigger, but definitely a contributor. Yeah. To well, the I, I, can, I, I can understand, understand where Jerry's coming Cy from. When, when you get cyber bullied, right? Okay, so, you know, you get people commenting and all that. Mm. So, if mm. someone says something negative to you, you just block that person. Yes, you can, mm. but it doesn't go away. Because mm. there are a lot of, like Dr. Jerry said, uh, they create a lot of these profiles which allows them to Correct. be anonymous and then they can follow you Correct. whenever they want to. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously something wrong mm. uh, is something wrong with the person who wants to keep on bullying yeah, you. But, but at the end of the day, if you keep on just blocking them out, you know, they, they'll get tired and go away. Or if they don't, then make a police report. Or Dr. Something. Jerry, am mm. I right to say that sometimes the bullied feel like they deserve it? Or it's Ooh. okay for it to wow. happen to them? Wow. Ooh very very uh, important point there uh and that is going back to fd's question because sometimes these um victims have very very low self-esteem mm. already and mm. they are very vulnerable mm. so mm. they feel small and they feel can we use the words they they feel like they deserve it but certainly mm. they feel that they don't have as much confidence as the bully it, yeah. and therefore they feel smaller than the bully so they feel like perhaps in that situation they are deserving 
because they're not as good as another person. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think Jerry, next time if you need some help, you ask me to come down to your office, okay? I will talk to <laughs> these people who are being cyberbullied. You know, I have been mm. so-called cyber... Or people have been trying to cyberbully me for years, right? I mean, now I'm, mm. I'm the nicest... <laughs> guy now i'm the most loved dj once upon mm. a time i was the most hated dj and let me just tell you okay it's like online people were right in to the radio station nobody has gotten more hate than mm. me mm. Mm. but the, the the funny thing is i i used to to thrive on it you thrive yeah. on I, it. yes i loved it yeah you know which is why i'm saying for someone who is not a public figure you know, you might mm. get cyberbullied mm-hmm. and all that, but it's it's just a handful of people, perhaps. Mm. It's easier to handle. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, if you if you need any help, maybe I can go down and uh, kind of like, you know, encourage Do them, and talk. make them feel better about themselves. This, this is uh, this is our last bit. Yeah, okay. yeah another topic for, for, for the team to go down to the different schools, actually. Mm. Physical and, bullying also, yeah. you can call me. <laughs> I will also uh, talk to them. Muay yeah. Thai. Well. He'll show them how yeah. to how to fight back. No, <laughs> like, not necessarily fight back. Only fight back when it's necessary. Uh, but no, not not nothing about fighting. But just how to 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 not uh, completely break down. You yeah. Know, to to continue to be confident and and push and on. Strong. Yeah. yeah. You know, Doctor Jerry, you usually end with a quote. But before you mm-hmm. end with your quote, I have a quote that I saw on uh, Instagram, which I thought would sure. be quite good for today. It says this is yes. by Jimi Hendrix, and it says, "When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace." Mm. I think that's a Huey Lewis song. I think. No. No, no, it's, uh, it's Jimi Hendrix. Jimi quote. Hendrix, yeah. 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 I think we will go with your quote that is oh. lovely. No, no, no. You yeah. you need your quote as well, please. <laughs> I want so Jerry's cute. quote. Yeah. I, I want Jerry's quote. I want Jerry's quote. What are you guys? Three? Stop. <laughs> quote, huh? not quote, huh? Because <laughs> you know, you, if you want Jerry's quote, you'll have to take out a quote now. <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm very no quote. But <laughs> just for your very psychic. <laughs> boy you know um the the uh bystanders cyber bully bystanders if you're doxing a person if you are reposting a negative comment you're already participating Mm. in the bullying so don't even do that so just a really gentle uh, no not gentle a, a big reminder out there for everyone that don't repost bad comments or videos. Just delete it from your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Ooh. For sure. So, quote, quote, Polo um, Koho says, walk away from people who put you down. Walk away from fights that will never be resolved. Walk away from trying to please people who will never see your worth. The more you walk away from things that poison your soul, the healthier you will be. One of my favorite authors. Nice. Very nice. Very nice one, Jerry. I've got a few things to say about that. No, that's okay. No, Okay. (laughs) We've run out out of time. No more time, yeah. Thank you so much, Jerry. (laughs) Thank you for having me. And I'm going for the career day now. Yay! Have fun. (laughs) Say hi to all of them for us. Yeah, I will, I will. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Jerry. Bye-bye.